This is a direct love letter to Asian American women. It's meaningful for me to be here in San Francisco because of this city's rich Asian American history is one I've long been fascinated with. From your forbidden city to your Tong Wars, it makes me so proud to be able to bring part of that legacy to life with Bruce Lee's warrior. One year ago today marks one of the most heinous events for Asian Americans in recent memory. It also marks the start of one of the most major depressive episodes of my adult life. In the wake of the Atlanta murders, I found myself unable to get out of bed for weeks. The grief I felt, the psychic attack of the mass shootings incapacitated me. And as I lay there for hours on end, I wondered, why am I so overwhelmed with grief? Was it as simple as seeing myself in those women? Or was it because of the many places I've traveled to, from Malaysia to South Africa, from Toronto to Cambodia, I've always ended up in Asian spots. Because no matter what new and foreign place I ended up in, I'd find these spas that, to me, were sacred spaces where the women grounded me with a sense of home and familiarity. They were mothers and grandmothers. Many were migrants. All were working to support their families. They were always appreciative of my attempts to connect, and sometimes I sensed they were grateful to spend an hour with me and not a man who might demand more of them. I'm a storyteller. I'm a true believer in the power of story. Stories can shape perceptions. Stories can shape communities and policies and therefore societies. And beyond the individual actions of any one person who harms someone in our community, I'm starting to also question the stories institutions and systems create to simultaneously perpetuate and invisibilize violence against our most vulnerable, our unhoused women, our unemployed, our unfed, our undocumented, our transgender, our women who have economic and linguistic barriers to navigate every single day, the women who are most affected by colorism, my career has largely been shaped the last few years playing women who outsmart systems of oppression for autonomy of their bodies, their futures, their families, and their own fragile sense of humanity constantly under attack. On paper, these women are easy to judge, especially if sex work is part of their survival. It's been my job to portray these women with the dignity they deserve no matter how they choose to survive. And it's a dignity I was bitterly reminded a year ago today isn't always afforded to Asian women in real life. And let me be clear, racism is not new to me. Schoolyard bullies and casual racism were just a part of life growing up for me in Edmonton, Alberta. I was 15 the first time I was attacked by a middle-aged man who cornered me on my way to the bus stop shoved me back and called me a chink as his spit flew in my face. He screamed at me to go the fuck back to China and stop taking our jobs. Right before me, he did the same thing to an Asian grandmother. And when I asked mall security for help, they did nothing. At 21, as a rookie television reporter, I remember being part of a debate about two new hosts of competing entertainment shows. I said, well, I'm cheering for both of them because they're both Asian women. And a cameraman said, yeah, and neither are offensively Asian. Offensively Asian. Recently, while shooting my last show, C, for Apple TV, a driver on my first day made a joke to me about China creating COVID in order to sell masks. I could give more examples of incidents I've had during the pandemic alone, but all this to say, as someone who's experienced a spectrum of what racism can be, after Atlanta, I realized a large part of my depression was feeling like I could never do enough to create the world I wish I'd grown up in. I wondered, what awful stories did people tell themselves about Asians 
to justify punching us 125 times in the face, breaking our bodies, pushing us in front of trains, hunting seven of us down in two hours, tackling us in the streets, putting a gun to our heads and shooting us. What stories. And that brings me to all of you. Your stories matter. Who you are, what you've been through, what you know in your bones to be true matters. And you don't have to be in my position to have a platform. Each and every one of you in this room, each and every one of you watching from home, you can do things and reach people I can't. It might be your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, your classrooms, your community, your children. You have reach, you have talent and value to contribute. And in finding your place in all of this, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I know many in our community are grasping for solutions in this moment, but if we aren't careful, we may find ourselves seeking justice from people and ideologies that don't have our best interests at heart. Just look to the history of anti-Asian lynchings, murders of Chinese miners, riots and destructions of Chinatowns, Japanese internment camps, the Filipino farmers movement, the Vietnam War, Hawaii, Vincent Chin, and now Christian Hall, to remember the critical importance of challenging systems that have not always earned our trust. Instead, we must look within our own community for a bolder vision of safety for APIs. And California has some of the greatest civil rights leaders right now, like Dr. Connie Wan of Oakland's AAPI Women Lead, Korean American activist and author Michelle Mi Jung Kim, Teresa Sia Gatono, Ai Jin Poo, just to name a few. Look to the Asian women around you. Look to the grassroots organizations they are leading all around you and amplify and support them because they've already been doing the work for decades. They're already in community with the most vulnerable of our Asian diaspora, and they know the complexities of the systems that oppress them in ways many of us are just beginning to awaken to. Look to them, support them, follow their lead until you figure out what your leadership looks like. What happens in America matters, and I have felt immense pain watching the violence against Asian American women. It has left me numb and exhausted. And if it has left you numb and exhausted too, please let yourself rest. When you need to rest, rest. It is the most important part of this cycle and this movement. And while Atlanta left me numb and exhausted, it was watching your collective grief and anger bloom into bravery, awakening, community, resourcefulness, and resilience that ultimately got me out of bed one year ago. That is the power of story you are creating as Asian American women. And do not doubt the butterfly effect you continue to create with your willingness to show up, to question, to listen, to activate, to rise. You are all butterflies with iron wings. You are warriors. Thank you. Mm -hmm.